Thanks for being here. It's great to uh, spend this evening with all of you. <clears throat> Especially, this is uh, a wonderful time for us in that this is also a celebration of our 10-year anniversary. We didn't really promote that because we had an awful lot of other things to promote, but this is 10 years for us. And, and I can reflect back to 10 years ago at a time whenever I was really thinking through what is God doing in what I was in a consulting practice at the time and we were focused kind of one-to-one on small businesses and we were helping them integrate faith principles into their planning processes and into their work and as we were doing that I felt like the Lord was beginning to just kind of speak to my heart that we've been focusing one-on-one to people But in order to get more people to that stage that were willing to do that, we needed to start focusing on the many. As we prayed about that as a board and began thinking about what that might look like and what that might mean, we really came on the conclusion that we needed to form a nonprofit to embrace the things that God was already doing with our writing, teaching, radio, and different things that were going on. And so we jumped in 10 years ago in the midst of the chaos of 9-11 and all that that was going on and actually started a nonprofit called Integrity Resource Center at that time. And really it was by God's leading of starting to focus on promoting and teaching God's principles to many in the workplace. And the vision I had at that time and just kind of the dreams of my heart, I was spending a lot of time in the book of Nehemiah. And if you remember that great story where they get to a place to where they finish building those walls and God had shown up in a miraculous way and it changed the nature of that community. People's hearts were just ripped open for God and they ended up signing a covenant with God. All the people lined up to make this commitment. And that passage just really gripped me as I thought about that. And I believe that that God began just kind of challenging me, what would it look like if we saw over 100,000 plus business leaders actually make that level of commitment to God? I think it would change lives, workplaces, entire communities in a profound way. And so it's been that burning passion in my heart ever since of seeing what can we do as an organization to try and help stir up this movement that God wants to create in and through the workplace. And that's really what the dream is for Integrity Resource Center. That's why I do the things that I do, because I have a desire to see each and every one of you live out to the fullest what God's put in you to do it his way and to please him in the way that you do it. Well, this is our 10 years, and so we've accomplished a lot in this last 10 years, but it's also a great time to stop and reflect. So we actually took this time this year to reflect on who we are, where we're headed, and how are we going to get there. And we hired a firm called J. Schmid, that's a marketing company, to help us kind of look at our branding, our messaging, and all of that, to just try and get a better sense of who we are and where we're headed. And I'm excited to roll out tonight to you some new logos and looks and feels. So you might notice the signs around the room look a little different than they have in the past. Some taglines are different and there's some things that have changed here at Integrity Resource Center. And so I wanted to just give you a moment to see what that's all about. If you take a look at this new logo, we were blessed to have a graphic designer as part of the marketing team that felt like the Lord gave her a verse to help her figure out what this design should look like. And if you look at this, you'll notice these red squares that are spiraling around on the inside. That represents the chaos that we live in these days with the chaos around us in that work-life challenge that we all have. And that white center... That is supposed to represent that peace that we're trying to drive towards, that purity, that, that integrity at the core in the heart of our being. 
And then you'll notice the big block square that, that uh, shapes around all of it. And that square represents the rock. The rock of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so it was just pretty cool whenever we just kind of heard how that played out. And that really is what uh, this logo is all about. But let me switch and just kind of share a little bit about our vision. It's always important to know why you exist. And IRC exists because we want to foster an integrity and faith-based movement of God in America and beyond. We hope to be a catalyst to help people in the marketplace realize that God wants to do something unique and different in their workplaces, and we hope to help you do that. Our mission or our purpose is really all about uh, helping others promote, teach, and practice God's principles in the workplace. Let me tell you how we're going to do that with an illustration. How many of you remember the first time you had the opportunity to drive? Probably before you even had a driver's license, I would hope. Well, I remember it quite well. I was 12 years old, and I was working on my uncle's farm. And he needed the truck moved, and he was busy doing something else. And he said, Rick, go move the truck up the field a ways. Well, it was a pickup truck with a four-wheel drive and a stick shift, and I didn't know a brake from a clutch. And he's wanting me to move this pickup truck, and as you might imagine, I had a lot of those leaping and lungings, and the truck would stop and die, and I'd try it again, and it, it just kept happening until finally my uncle had to come and say, let me show you how this works. And he began that learning process of helping me understand how to learn to drive. And later, my family and our insurance company decided that it would be wise if I took driver's ed. And so the learning continued with driver's ed. But at some point along the way, I had to make a commitment. I had to decide, am I going to drive in the future? Do I want to go down this path? And that commitment took form in having to go take that driver's test and having to actually drive with someone else to prove that I was worthy. And so I had to make that commitment that day. But even after I made that commitment and they handed me that driver's license, do you think I was done learning? I don't think so. I, I discovered that the hard way. I probably, in my arrogance, thought that I was. But two months later, the first snowfall came. And you probably know where this is headed. I took my father's car and I plowed it into the back of some lady's car. And I ended up buying myself a car that day. And so I suddenly learned that you have to continue to practice until some point you get to the place to where I was many years ago that I had the opportunity to teach my daughter how to drive. Well, I share that with you because I think that this workplace journey is very similar. I think we have to learn what God's principles are and how they relate to our workplace. And then it's important that we make a commitment. At some point, you have to commit to God's ways and that you want to do it that way. And then finally, after you've made that commitment, you need to practice and live it out in the way that God would have you do that. At Integrity Resource Center, one of the things that we've done over the years that goes back to that Nehemiah story is, is at the end of each of our events in the past, when we would have the Old Faith Incorporated events, we would challenge people to come forward and sign what we call our fire covenant, a covenant with God. And it's a way for people to make that commitment that they want to drive a stake in the ground and they want to do things God's way. And I'm pleased that we have had many, many people over the years that have made that commitment. And we want to take just a moment uh, tonight here in just a few minutes, we want to take a moment to identify some of those people that are in the room tonight that have made that commitment and just pray over them for the position that they've been called to there. But first I want to talk to you about our uh, ministry funnel. We have three primary tools that we use to try and help people that come out of our mission statement. We try and promote, help others promote God's principles, and we help them teach God's principles, and then we also try and help them practice them. The way that we promote 
is through three things, integrity moments, events like this, and our content on our website. Now, integrity moments take shapes in many forms. We have a daily email that goes out, and we've been blessed that uh, close to 2 million people now receive that on a periodic basis in eight different languages. That also goes out as a daily radio spot on our good friends Bot Radio uh, here locally. And I'm thrilled to announce that uh, November 1st, we are going to do a national launch of taking that daily radio spot to stations around the nation. We're really excited about that. And you can also do that with podcasts, listen to that with podcasts or on iTunes as well. You know, with our events, we've served over 5,000 people over the last 10 years through the events that we have as a way to try and help encourage people. And then our content on our website. We just rolled out a brand new website that you can see a picture up there uh, just this week. And we are going to be beefing that up with more and more content because we, just in this last 12 months, have had close to 100,000 unique visitors to that website. And we want to provide content to people from all over the world that might be help, helpful uh, to them in their journey as well. Well, next in the funnel, we also teach God's principles. Uh, we do that a lot through our new fire in the workplace process. That's one of the reasons why you see the name here tonight of this event. FIRE is an acronym that stands for Faith, Integrity, Relationships, and Excellence. And we desire people to have a process that they can go through so that they understand how to go the next step. And so we start people off with a FIRE assessment. It's a free tool online that we highly encourage you to go try. It helps bubble up the issues that you might need to address in your own life or the things that you're doing well as, uh, also. Also, we do speaking engagements and workshops. We provide resources and counseling to many businesses from around the country. And so there's a number of ways there that we teach. And then finally, we help people practice God's principles. And this is an area that we're going to be the most focused on going forward is the fire covenant is a way for people to make that commitment. And then we have an online fire in the workplace course. It's a six-session course that you can do at your own leisure anytime that you want that will take you deeper in these areas. And if you look in your program tonight, there is a passcode in there that you can actually take that for free. And so we uh, would love to offer that up to you so that you can experience that and go a little deeper in that as well. We also hope to start doing a little more on the consulting side of helping businesses that want to inject some culture, uh, the corporate culture into their business according to faith and integrity. And then we're going to be doing some trainer and mentor program. So I've covered a lot of area, a lot of ground in some of the things, just to give you a real brief synopsis of what we're doing. But I've asked uh, Gary Schmitz, which is a uh, pastor uh, over the executive director over Citywide Prayer Movement, to come up tonight and to, we want to identify those of you in the audience that have signed that fire covenant in the past. I looked at the list and I think there's probably you know, 40 or, or so in that area here tonight that I know of. And so we just challenge you to stand here in a moment when Gary comes up. And go ahead, Gary, and come up. And we just want Gary to pray over you, anointing and commissioning you for the great commitment that you've made and that God would bless that commitment and help you to walk faithfully in it. We know that there is, uh, none of us are perfect. We're going to stumble at times. But this is a commitment that I think God wants us to not take lightly. So here's Gary to just pray. So if you would mind just standing, if you have signed that covenant sometimes in the past, and right here we have had, this is one that hangs on my wall that I've signed, and many of you have probably signed it at Faith Incorporated, some maybe even online. So if you wouldn't mind, just take a moment and stand right now. Heavenly Father, God, we humble ourselves tonight before your majesty and your glory. Lord, here in this room, probably every one of us carry a dream in our hearts to see a great revival and a spiritual awakening in our city that transforms communities. And Lord, tonight we just affirm, God, these, these men and women that have made covenant commitments to walk in integrity in the workplace, we bless them. In the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray for courage and we pray for perseverance to 
fully walk this out, Lord. And tonight we acknowledge, uh, I acknowledge as a pastor, how much we need leaders in the workplace to be able to find their gifts and to be raised up to places of prominence and influence in the workplace. So we just bless you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Gary. You can have a seat. Now it's my pleasure to uh, introduce my lovely bride, Kathy, has joined me in this journey in this ministry this year on a part-time basis, which she lately doesn't think it's been too part-time because she's been organizing all of this. But she has an opportunity that we have coming up next March that she's going to come up and share briefly with you about. Come on up. try this again. Good evening. Good, thanks. I'm glad you can hear me. How was your dinner? Good. I liked it too. I'm so glad you could join us all this evening. Rick and I are really glad that you are here. Does anybody have a bucket list? I do. Have you ever dreamed of going to the Holy Land and seeing where Jesus lived? If so, then March is your next big opportunity. Join Rick and me and our co-host, Reverend um, Tom Krause and Miriam, as we lead the Integrity Resource Center 10-day tour to the Holy Land. We leave March the 11th. It's a 10-day tour through Israel with a four-day optional extension through Jordan. You will experience the Bible. You'll see the life of Jesus up close and personal, all where it right took place. We will visit the Sea of Galilee, Jerusalem, and many other key biblical sites. I'm so excited. <laughs> this trip is designed as an enjoyable tour However, it's also a great opportunity to learn business principles. We have guest speakers, Carrie Summers and Tim Sotos. Carrie is the former CEO of Silver Dollar City. He is the founder of Nazareth Village, which is a first century theme park in Israel. And Tim Sotos is the CEO of Clinical Reference Laboratories, and he's also the author of um, The Shepherd and His Staff. If you would like to learn more about this great opportunity and you'd like to visit the Holy Land, please talk to Rick or myself or our co-host, Reverend Tom and Miriam. At the table in the back corner, we have all sorts of literature for you to look over. And we just would really be excited if you thought about joining us. So thank you so much. That's it. I'd like to take a quick second and just thank Rick and Kathy and their staff at IRC as well as the board for entrusting me to uh, be a host for them.